who leads us? What do y'all say, Dr. Umar, so I can laugh? God. God. <laughs> Sean King, I beg your pardon? <laughs> All right, so we put Sean King on the left, oh, right? No, no. We put Dr. Umar on the right. <laughs> I'll say Dr. Umar, goddammit. <laughs> Someone got to put it, throw his, throw his, uh, throw his name Dr. in there. Umar, Dr. Umar, Dr. Umar. Yes. Listen. How about no leaders, because we don't have to wait for a messiah to come save us. We could just save ourselves. No, Dr. Umar is better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Umar, if you're watching, because I know you are, all right, I'm ready. Firstly, Dr. Umar, we apologize for having this white man in such close proximity to us. Uh, we, we didn't want disrespect, to disrespect your legacy like that. You can, you can leave. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's like, I've been trying to find an excuse to leave. No, but that's such a funny and interesting question. Like, I couldn't pinpoint one. Like, there's no civil rights movement as as in the 60s or 50s where, you know, there's this, oh, this one person, you know, the Martin Luther King, the mm-hmm. Malcolm X's to, to lead us. Do you good. have? A question, I have a question. Oh. Um, with all the history, who would want that role? And I think, I think that's it, honestly. I think... The leader, the leaderless revolution has become very popular because we get tired of our leaders getting assassinated all the time. And frankly, we I, still do, we still have activists who are being yeah, I think, killed, killed. Yeah, that's 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 a good question. But I think there's so many people that do. Um, again, like just being an activist puts the target on your back. Mm-hmm. And you say, based on the history, the people that were those activists, the Martin Luther Kings, whatever, took that risk. And it's like you know who would want to be in that position is is a good question, but. They wanted to be in that position. And they knew what the risks were. Right. Um, so I feel like a lot of people. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, so kind of like so like for this hypothetical leader, he knows or she knows that the, that the land, that the promised land he wants to take or she wants to take their, their people to, mm-hmm. he won't be able to get there because he knows that I'm not going to see this, but I'm going to die for the better cause of my. So we're electing think, martyrs, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think we have so many that are, like, kind of underrated. Um, for for example, like, Colin Kaepernick put a lot on the line for doing what he did. That's and true. it's like, you know, he got a lot of hate with that. Could have been killed. Like, you don't know what comes with that once you make that move and you decide to be become that activist and such a public figure. I don't think he's, like, leading marches in the same way Martin Luther King was, but he is still doing things that are are in the realm of activism that, you know, those other people may have also done. So he's a, so he's so he's an activist. Yeah, but again, like I don't think he's the one leading us into the revolution, but he's definitely an activist right. that's seen that's is very public and, you know, can still be put in a position where to receive hate the same way is others there, that have been assassinated. I think, I think Sharon's hundred percent right. I think the idea that we need someone leading the way for us is antiquated. It's old. It's, it's something that had to be done at a time where we weren't able to rally with each other, but we have the internet and social media, like TikTok, you know what I'm saying? Like people are activists on TikTok, getting 20,000 views. That's 20,000 people who just heard your message and they're going to spread it out into the right. world. And we no longer need to be in a place where we have to latch ourselves onto one person, martyring them basically, mm-hmm. right? Asking them to sacrifice so much to put themselves on this line, and then at the end of the day, they're never going to be enough. Mm-hmm. You know what yep. I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, these are just people. Martin Luther King was just a person. Malcolm X was just a person. But we elevate them to a status so much more beyond that, we, we strip away their personhood. You know what I'm saying? Now mm-hmm. they have to be perfect. Now I can't cheat on my wife without the whole movement being affected by it. You know what I'm saying? I can't... I can't. Just don't cheat on your wife, bro. Just relax. <laughs> but what if I want to leave? No. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah. every flaw, right, is no longer a flaw in me. It's a flaw in my movement. Yeah. It's a flaw on, on, on the, yeah. the principles that I'm trying to value. And I think strip away the leaders. Strip away the people who are fallible, and let's just deal with the people who are here working. Right? We can, as a group, we've had moments where we supported each other. And we don't necessarily have leaders. We have areas where you're strong in and areas where I'm strong in, and we take lead roles. But we're not... The end all be <laughs> not the Martin Luther King. Right. Right. Like, right. right. Not the Martin Luther King. That and what is like if there was a revolution, what would be the like focus of that revolution? Because depending on what type of black person you are, the main goal that you might want to be focusing on might be different from another black person. Like if you're part of the LGBT, like you're a black trans woman, you just don't want to be killed. But meanwhile, like 
by like anybody, including black people, but then a black man doesn't want to be targeted by the police. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, um, I think that goes back into both of your points where like you know we don't need a leader, mm-hmm. and um, again the the Black Lives Matter movement, for example, right, yeah. mm-hmm. has a few people leading it, but in itself is a movement, right? Yeah. People people get it confused like oh yeah the people that made it are like Marxists or whatever, and they try to target those people, right. but in its in itself. Those are just three words, right? And to some people, they mean something. To some people, they mean something else, right? Some people actually see it as hate for some reason, right? <laughs> right. But there are movements that have gathered and moved people, right? And those people that started the Black Lives Matter have not been part of everything that, you know, has happened under the, the words Black Lives Matter. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's interesting. And, again, I think we are in a leaderless world now. Like, you know, there's movements. There's that they need to have a face on that movement, yeah. right? Um, when you talk about the civil rights era, you talk about you know so many different people who were leaders within that that mm-hmm. era, but the civil rights era in itself was a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was its own right movement, right? It was yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm again I'm tired of our movements being stopped because people catch a bullet. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not they're not going to stop murdering people, trying to stop the movement. But when your movement is like fucking World War Z zombies, you know what I'm saying? At your door, your bullets ain't gonna do nothing to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You'll you'll stop one or two people, and the movement won't even feel that. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Well, those are all our questions. Yep. All right. Well, um, I think maybe we just want to hear some final thoughts from Jay. About what? <laughs> About everything. About everything. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Good man. Okay. Thank you, Jay, for. Her. Being with us and uh, anytime, and, uh, giving I, us your input. Uh, can I go home now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we actually uh, forced him to be here. He's actually buckled into the couch. Uh, <laughs> White slaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. But uh, I think I think conversations like this are super important, right? Mm-hmm. Especially the part mostly about holding white people as hostage to listen to them. Oh yeah. But um, <laughs> fully on board. With that. <laughs> yes. But. No, they're important conversations to have because I think even you know like like we said about and we're ending on like legalist movements. We we should just have the conversations in general because you know people say things like oh we want reparations how why make it practical yeah. like we we have a lot of questions we have more questions than answers to even a lot of the questions we just right. asked mm-hmm. and I think it's super important that that these discussions happen. So start with your in your living room make your. Uh, white family uncomfortable, sit mm-hmm. them down, buckle them into the couch, and do this. Yes. Do this cool. Yeah, we should, we're probably, we're probably going to do this again. For sure. For sure. Right, Jay? Yeah, <laughs> 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 He's with us. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and happy Black History Month. Bye.